In this tutorial, we'll be talking about the part of the CNS that is the brain. And you guys know that the CNS is composed of the brain and spinal cord. So we'll talk about the brain today in detail. Uh, and we'll continue our discussion from the definition of the brain. Then uh, we will tell you about the location of the brain, the protection, the parts, and the function of these parts of the brain, the limbic system, the brain stem, and the ventricles. So we'll talk about all of these. So let's start from the definition. How will we define the brain it is actually the control center of the nervous system your entire nervous system is actually controlled by the brain and uh, where it is located it is located in the skull cranium okay which is actually the very portion where the brain lies and uh, the next point is the protection the brain is protected by the meninges these are actually the membrane three types of the membranes uh, the dura matter arachnoid matter and pia matter these three they are actually providing the protection to the brain dura matter is the top one then we have the arachnoid matter after that we have the pia matter and between the arachnoid this one second one and the pia matter we have a fluid known as cerebrospinal fluid this fluid is also providing the protection it means it is actually cushioning the brain so whenever you have a kind of a, a strike to your head region uh, in that case in order to avoid the effect of that uh, strike to your brain this csf actually absorbs the effect of that strike and if the strike is of uh, enough high intensity then that strike might damage your brain so in short csf meninges and uh, skull the cranium these all are actually protecting your brain uh, the next point is the parts. So we have generally forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. These three are the major parts of the brain. And uh, further we have some more parts that are actually going to make these four mid and hindbrain. We have the cerebrum, the largest part of the brain, thalamus and hypothalamus. These three combined together, they are making the forebrain. And uh, here we have the pons, midbrain and cerebellum. These three combined together, they are making the hindbrain. And the portion between these two, the forebrain and the hindbrain is the midbrain okay that's it now let's come towards the functions of each part the very first one is cerebrum from the forebrain we are starting so we're actually uh, going to tell you people about these portions and we do have some other portions some other areas about which we have talked and we will talk in our next videos also well so for this video just uh, you are supposed to concentrate on these specific parts for now because this is going to be a very important video for the lower and higher grades this video is going to cover and clear the concepts of the lower grade students and higher grade students so this is for uh, actually for all students so the next point is the functions now uh, let's move towards the functions of each so the very first one is cerebrum as you guys know that it is the largest part of the brain and uh, when you just concentrate the structure of the cerebrum it is having convulsions noun is uh, ridges and or gyri okay these convulsions and these convulsions are then separated by the grooves we have uh, sulcus and fissure the sulcus is actually called as these minor minor grooves these are actually the minor grooves these grooves are known as sulci we have number of uh, grooves then we call it sulci if you're talking about the one that is sulcus so this is sulcus and these all are actually the sulci sulci is actually a plural word okay and the fissure is actually the longer or the deep groove so this is the fissure this is the fissure the longer one and uh, the deep one this is actually going to divide your brain or your hemisphere into two you have uh, the this cerebrum is actually then divided into two hemispheres the right and left hemisphere this division is because of the fissure the longer groove the deep groove so this fissure actually divides your uh, cerebrum into two hemispheres the right hemisphere left hemisphere and again at the bottom these both the hemispheres are connected by means of the band of the axons band of axons known as corpus callosum which is connecting actually the right and left hemispheres and like this your right left hemispheres are connected and uh, further the right and left hemisphere now both of these uh, hemispheres have got uh, separate uh, jobs like uh, the left one it is responsible for your language uh, your logic your mathematic these three are basically controlled by the left hemisphere and regarding the right hemisphere it is believed that this portion is responsible for controlling your emotion your imagination your spatial perception your artistic activities these all are actually controlled by the right hemisphere so these two are the basic portions responsible for this particular jobs that i just mentioned a moment earlier okay after that we have another discussion that is regarding the controlling mechanism your right 
side is going to control the left side of the body and your left side is supposed to control the right side of the body now what is the logic behind the logic behind is very simple the neurons that are actually arising from this frontal portion of the brain or from the cortical portion of this cerebrum after arising from this particular portion of the cerebrum then they are actually supposed to move to different side to cross the right and left side and like this the neurons of the right side are actually moving towards the left side of the body and uh, like this the neurons from the uh, left side of the brain are moving towards the right side of the body due to which our right side of the brain is controlling the left skeletal muscles or left portion of the body and uh, and the same is the case with the left side which is going to control your right side so this is the very logic behind that how our body is controlled by the brain okay the reason behind is crossing of the neurons and the next point is the thalamus it is actually uh, having a relay mechanism for the sensory and motor signals you are receiving the sensory signals and then the motor signals are provided back towards the particular uh, sensations regarding the particular sensations whatever the sensation is according to that then the motor signals are provided well now these sensory and motor signals they are actually relayed they are actually directed by mean of the thalamus now let me uh, make you people understand through an analogy suppose a person is standing somewhere uh, where there is a kind of a big office there are sub offices present in that office a b c d e okay now if someone comes and asks this person that i want to go to the d office or e office or f office now this person will tell that your d or e office is that side so the thalamus is having the same job it is telling the signal that you are supposed to go to the particular portion of the brain and again when the motor signals are coming now this was for the sensory and again when the motor signals are coming then the motor signals are again told that you are supposed to move the particular portion of the body in order to perform certain functions so that's it this is actually having a relay mechanism and for these signals we have a relay station that station is actually the midbrain and this midbrain is responsible also for the audio and visual sensations and we have a number of sensations that are controlled by the uh, thalamus or you can say that relayed by thalamus but just one sensation is there that is not relayed by thalamus that is the sensation of smell which is actually having a direct link towards the brain particular portion so this is a little bit about the thalamus now let's come towards the hypothalamus hypothalamus has two important uh, job that is the link and the homeostasis now what do we mean by the link it is actually linking the nervous system with your endocrine system how like very simple so like this you know that it is uh, the portion of the nervous system the next point is that it is linking this nervous system with the endocrine system you know the pituitary gland the master gland which is controlling your entire endocrine system so your this uh, hypothalamus is actually controlling this pituitary gland due to which it is linking the nervous system with the endocrine system very simple and the next point is the homeostasis and your hypothalamus is responsible to maintain a normal condition of your body with your surrounding environment so whenever you feel thirst hunger and your temperature goes up and down this is just because of hypothalamus it is responsible to control you feel thirst you feel hungry reason behind is hypothalamus the next portion is the cerebellum which is the portion of the hindbrain and you guys know that we discussed now the fore and midbrain together this now the, the portion is hindbrain so we have cerebellum pons and medulla oblongata in this particular Part of the brain cerebellum is responsible to maintain your equilibrium the way you walk the way you perform jobs through your hands or the way you talk etc these all actually equilibrium is actually controlled by the cerebellum equilibrium the next one is the pons this is actually a kind of a bridge between the medulla oblongata cerebellum cerebrum okay so it has uh, another uh, very important job that is the sensation of taste are actually targeted towards the pons and uh, then we have the breathing rate which is controlled by the pons and the same breathing or respiration is controlled by the medulla oblongata also medulla oblongata which is actually controlling the autonomic functions like your respiration your uh, heart rate your blood vessels contraction dilation and etc these are actually controlled by the medulla oblongata now these are the very important points that you must remember if you want to learn the biology the physiology and the pharmacology in a very good way we do have another points also remember that so here we have the next portion that is the limbic system the limbic system is actually a neuronal pathway that is actually uh, covering uh, the frontal lobe temporal lobe thalamus and hypothalamus so when it reaches the thalamus and hypothalamus uh, it actually uh, form two types of shapes one is seahorse shape another was an ermine shape and uh, this seahorse shape is known as hippocampus and the ermine shape is known as amygdaloid or amygdala which means ermine shape 
the seahorse shape is named as hippocampus and it is responsible for your learning for your memory and uh, the next one is amygdala it is responsible for your pleasure punishment sexual arousal feeling of rage and fear these are actually controlled by the your amygdala and uh, regarding the limbic system it is believed that limbic system is responsible for your complex learning and your long short term memory that's it the next point is the brain stem regarding brain stem we have three specific portions midbrain spawn and medulla midbrain and spawn medulla these three combined together they make the brain stem and the brain stem is responsible to maintain the life support and uh, if the brain stem is damaged by any way then uh, the entire body down the brain will stop working means the the body will become paralyzed so the person uh, will be alive but this person is considered as dead according to the scientists of some uh, countries like uk so they consider the person as like dead though the person is alive okay uh, now let's move towards the ventricles we have one two three four ventricles the first two ventricles are known as the lateral ventricle then we have the third and the fourth ventricle these ventricles are supposed and responsible to produce the cerebrospinal fluid and then transported from the same uh, ventricles to the entire nervous system so this is actually uh, responsible for the production of the cerebrospinal fluid and the same cerebrospinal fluid is responsible to wash your nervous system so uh, the region that lie uh, are the uh, hemispheres right left hemisphere the, the thalamus lie here and we have the next uh, that is the brain stem that is the fourth ventricle region so these are actually the regions which are being washed so the, these were the particular regions uh, available around the ventricles so this is a, a little bit from my side regarding the brain and uh, i hope so you got if still you have any kind of question feel free to ask us in the comment box we are here to help you guys and thank you for watching